Okay, so I've been coding now for about five years and I remember when I was learning it took me about like a year just to learn to code and that was because I was struggling with how to do it and I was like on and off trying to learn for a year and knowing what I know now I know that I could have easily shortened that down to probably about a month and that's not a month of like full-on studying that's a month of like I would say one hour of studying per day for an entire month. I think you can learn to code easily in that amount of time. And so I thought I'd make a video showing like how I would learn to code today if I got to start over, because I think that could be really valuable. I know that I would have wanted this kind of video when I got started. When the mom was saying, I still see, but now what's that out? So I got the idea for this video from another YouTuber called Tina Huang or Huang. Not really sure how you say your name and I'm really sorry about that, but you should definitely go check out her video because she did a video on this topic and I think her answer is really good. But as I was watching that, I was just thinking like, what would I tell myself if I was to start all over? So now let's get into my recommendations. And my first recommendation would be looking into which language you're gonna learn. And here I want to emphasize something and that is that it really doesn't matter at all which language you choose. And the reason for this is that when we don't know how to code we go into it and we hear that there's different languages and it sounds like there's like Chinese and there's American and that's kind of the difference between them. But the reality is more that it's like yeah there's different languages but it's more like American accent versus British accent versus Australian accent. If you're American, you can read British English. If you're Australian, you can read American English and vice versa all around. So that's kind of the difference between different programming languages as well. So it really doesn't matter which language you choose, but if I had to choose a language or recommend a language, then I would recommend Java all day. And the reason for this is that it's like a perfect balance of complexity in my opinion. It's not the most complex language, but it's also not the easiest language. And a lot of people recommend Python because it's like considered one of the easier languages. And because it's one of the easier languages, it's also considered one of the easier languages to learn, which I don't think that those two things are the same thing because I think that Python is easier to write in because it does a lot of things for you. So you have to write less code for it to work, which kind of makes it easier. It makes it faster to code in Python, but the problem with that is that you don't necessarily need to understand how things work in order to code in Python. So if you know that you're going to be just coding in Python, then definitely go ahead and learn Python. But if you're unsure of which language you want to work in, then I would suggest going for something like Java because Java is a little bit more complex. It's a little bit more time consuming when it comes to how much code you need to write for it to work. But you'll learn a lot more about programming. And Java is also very similar to a lot of other languages, which means that if you learn Java, you'll be able to almost read Ruby and just like understand it straight away, almost read JavaScript, understand it straight away, Dart, uh, Swift, like pretty much every language I would say. Whereas if you've learned Python and then you go ahead and you look at Java code, then I think you'd be a little bit confused and you'd feel like, what are they doing and why are they doing all this stuff? What's, how do you even start with this? But if you learn Java and then look at Python, you'd be like, oh my God, this is so simple. They just remove a lot of stuff. And that's why I think Java is better to learn first. And also I think the difference between how long it would take to learn Python versus how long it would take to learn Java, the difference there is like minuscule. It pretty much doesn't exist, I would say. There's probably some sort of difference, but not much. And so then the way that I would recommend they actually learn Java is by buying a book, which is what I did after like a year of trying on and off. This is what actually led me to learning how to code and understanding it. 
because before then I was just like struggling, didn't understand what a class was, didn't understand for loops quite well, and just lots of things I didn't quite understand. But that's because I didn't take it in the proper order, I didn't follow a good method. And so this book, Java Head First, is what I bought. And I re basically read that book 30 minutes a day for an entire month. And that's essentially what I attribute like 90% of what I know today from, because that book just taught me so much good stuff. And that's what I recommend that you do. Just spend like an hour a day for two weeks and you'll be able to go through that entire book. And after that, you'll actually know how to code to a yeah, you'll actually be able to know how to code, I would say, because what you learn from that book is actually what you'll be using most of the time. And so once you understand that, you'll be able to build on that and actually move on to different levels. But that's the first step, just understanding how programming works and understanding how to write different programs. And that book gives you just such a solid foundation. Now, if you're more of like a visual learner instead of like a reader, then I would recommend looking into online courses. And for this, I think Brilliant has a really good course called Programming with Python. And that's the one that I would recommend that you check out. And if you use the link in my description, you can get a seven day free trial of Brilliant Premium. So you can go check their course out completely free. Their course is in Python, but like I've said, it doesn't really matter what language you start with. Once you learn one, you'll be able to use them all, trust me. And I think their course is a really great way to start if you're a visual learner, because their courses are really visual and hands-on. Brilliant also has other courses as well, and it's a great tool for learning STEM interactively. They have courses that will teach you everything from computer science to maths to scientific thinking, and I really can't recommend Brilliant enough, and I'm proud to have them as a sponsor for this channel and this video. And again, if you use the link in my description, you get a seven day free trial. And right now you also get a 20% discount on an entire year of Brilliant Premium. So go check that out at the link in the video description. And again, thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and being just a long-term partner of this channel. And after finishing the book or the course, you should know your basics of programming. And I'm gonna give you a checklist to check off for what the basics of programming actually are. And the first thing is variables. That's what I think you should learn first. Second thing is if statements or conditionals and for loops. A third thing is classes or objects in programming. And then the fourth thing is methods or functions. And once you understand these four things, you understand the basics of programming and you're ready to move on to the next step, which is picking a project. So when it comes to picking your first project, I'm gonna assume that most of you actually have a project in mind already, and that's why you're learning to code to begin with, unless you're like uh, one of my friends who actually just wanted to learn to code for the reason of learning to code, so he didn't have any project in mind, he just wanted to learn how to code. So I would say that you should probably start with your project, uh, the one that you had in mind and why you began to code. The only thing that you want to do before starting a project is actually learn the basics. That's my best advice because that's what I didn't do. I just started out trying to build a project, uh, which is a really good way to learn when it comes to programming. It's just that it's not the best way in the beginning because in the beginning you need to learn the basics in order to be able to even understand how to move on with your project. But if you're like my friend and you don't actually have a project in mind, then I would highly recommend checking out again Tina Huang's video because she did a really great job at explaining some really good starter projects that I also would recommend starting out with. So go check that out. I'll link that in the description. If you wanna build games, then try to build a simple game or try to build the game that you wanna build. The reason that you wanna work on projects is that you, especially if it's a project that you decide or choose on your own, is that if you do that, then you'll be motivated to actually keep going because you want to see your project finished. Whereas if you choose a project that someone else chooses for you, then you probably won't have the motivation to keep going. And the thing about programming is that you pretty much learn through projects. Like 
it's essentially for me at least it's been a thing of like I attempt something that I have no idea how to do and then I run into lots of lots of problems and by solving those problems I learn how to solve those problems if that makes sense and I learn new things and I kind of build on my repertoire of stuff that I know how to do when it comes to programming. Oh shit, that was a fish. Fuck. Oh my God. I saw him. Fuck, I got so stressed there. I was, I was like trying to say my lines or whatever. But yeah, my hottest tip is just like picking a project that you actually want to build and that could be a simple project. It could be something like Tic-Tac-Toe. It could be something like Snake, uh, the game. But it needs to be something that you're actually excited about because if you're not excited to build it, then you won't stay motivated enough to actually continue with it. And I'm also going to say that like at university when we were studying programming, I was the only one who read the book, which was the book Java Head First. And no one else actually had read that, from what I know at least. And by the end of the first course, which was like a month, everyone knew how to code basically. Like some were better than others, but everyone essentially knew how to code. So it really isn't that difficult to learn. And it is something that you can definitely learn within a month. And so in the beginning, it's really important to understand that like even the most experienced programmers, they don't know what they're doing a lot of the time. Like you just get better at understanding how to find the answers to the problems that you run into. That's essentially where you improve as a programmer. That's what I've noticed for me at least, is I don't necessarily know a lot more. It's just that I know what I need to Google in order to find the answers to the questions that I want. So essentially, Tim Ferriss talks about this a lot, which is like ask, asking better questions. And I feel like that's what happens when you program a lot. You ask better questions when it comes to programming. And so you're better able to then solve the problems that you run into quicker. And there's not much more to it than that, actually. So yeah, if you have any other recommendations, then uh, feel free to leave that in the comment section because I think it'd be really good to just get a resource built up in the comment section as well. Because my advice is specific to what I would have wanted to hear when I started. And Tina's advice was specific probably to what she would have wanted to hear when she started. So there's probably other ways of going about this. I'm not saying my way is the best one, which is why I think It'd be great if you guys want to comment in the comment section if you have more experience and if you have a different method that you would recommend for learning how to code because then potentially the comment section of this video could be a resource for other people as well to find other ways to go about actually learning how to code uh, which i think would be really good so uh yeah didn't catch any fish today i saw three i saw one that was really big like when i say big it's probably like this big i would say if i'm guessing um anyway that's it for this one i hope you enjoyed it and uh, also in case you don't know i have a email newsletter that i send out once every week and it's essentially about stuff that i find throughout the week things that i do progress updates uh, tools i'm using or books i'm reading and anything that i think you might find interesting so you can sign up to that using the link in my description or going to caltech.com slash clean code and yeah that's it for this one i hope you enjoyed it and i hope i'll see you in the next one Thank you.